Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make flash paper and flash carton from household products. Now if I tell you that you need sulfuric acid and nitric acid, you're going to scream and tell me that I'm lying, these are not household products. Well, we can make them out of household products. We can make sulfuric acid out of drain opener or root kill and we can make nitric acid out of stump remover. So check the links that I give in the description of this video and I give complete tutorial on how you can make these assets from these household products. Now in the present video I'm going to show you how to use these assets in order to make flash paper and flash card. We are going to deal with highly toxic gases so in principle this should be done in a fume hood. I don't have a fume hood so I'm doing it outside, but that is not enough. So I should use a respirator, which I don't have either. So I have a homemade one. It's full of air. And as I do the experiment, I can breathe. works perfectly well. Here is my homemade 95% nitric acid and my homemade 98% sulfuric acid. Now usually when I work with hydrochloric and sulfuric acid I don't wear gloves because it is not a big deal of having some acid on your hands. I mean, people always make a big deal of it, but it really is not. If you have some acid on your hands, you still have plenty of time to go wash them. It doesn't hurt and it doesn't do much on your skin, okay? If you rinse them off within two minutes, it's perfectly fine. Same with nitric acid. However, nitric acid leaves some really ugly yellow marks that take at least three weeks to go away. So, because of that, I am going to use some gloves. Now, if you look in the description of this video, I have a link where I show that you should definitely not wear latex gloves when you handle nitric acid. Okay, uh, just watch the video and see why. So, what I'm using here is vinyl gloves. I checked that they are perfectly fine with nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So this is what I'm going to wear. So the mixture is going to get really hot. So I put the container in a bath of ice cold water. And then here, this is just uh, water to rinse the, the paper, uh, to, to rinse off the acid. Okay. So uh, what we are going to do is to use a mix of five volumes of nitric acid and four volumes of sulfuric acid. So here I'm going to use 50 mils of nitric acid. And I'm using here my homemade respirator because as you can see it fumes and it's really really toxic.
So I'm going to pour this here. And here now 40 mils of sulfuric acid. Now you can you should use a glass rod in order to stir the solution you don't want to pollute the solution by using metal And I also have some homemade plastic tweezers. All right, so, well, the mixture is ready. So here I have some uh, napkins. They say that we should use pure cotton, uh, but I, I notice that it works even if the cotton is not pure. So here are uh, pieces of napkins, um, I mean paper towels, that looks like paper towels in public bathrooms. Uh, I don't remember where I got these. I don't remember stealing them from a public bathroom, but anyway, let's try. So put it in the mixture and you can put several layers and and let it sit like this for 15 minutes You should not leave it too long, otherwise it will completely decompose. So let us wait for 15 minutes. All right, it has been about 15 minutes, so I'm going to transfer these into the rinse water. And I just broke my tweezers. I heard them cracking. And it still work. Right. Separate the sheets. Of course, this won't completely rinse off the acid, but at least that will slow down the reaction. So that gives you time. Uh, what I will do after is to neutralize the solution by adding some baking soda. Okay, but for now, I mean, the amount of acid in this dish is relatively small, so 
the reaction is is really slow right now but uh, yes uh, it is very important to neutralize the the solution make sure that there is no acid left on the paper otherwise um, it won't um, if you don't use it right away it will degrade and uh, and not work well okay all right now um so i don't know how well these will work however what works perfectly well is toilet paper so yeah i have a few sheets And again, let me wait for 15 minutes and then we'll see. All right, it has been 15 minutes. So let me pick this up and actually since I have gloves, I guess I don't need to use the tweezers. I'm going to transfer the solution into this dish so that I can do flash cotton. Oops. All right. So for flash cotton, you can find some pure cotton balls in any pharmacy or even at Walmart. And what you want to do is to, um, how can I say that, to, to spread it. You don't want it to be dense like that. You don't want to put it uh, a tight ball, sorry, a tight ball directly into the solution otherwise it will become rock hard so try to to spread it without shredding it completely okay so something like that should work and put it in the solution now you may wonder uh, how frequently do you need to change the solution? Uh, I don't know. Um, you have to make some tests. Do several batches and then see when you get a batch that no longer works. Then that gives you the limit. I don't remember what the limit is. So, But definitely the solution is still good. Uh, and for the flash cotton, it's really important not to leave it in there for more than 15 minutes otherwise it will completely decompose All right, see you in 15 minutes. So, the flash cotton is now ready to be picked up. And here I'm simply going to do this and squeeze it like a sponge.
all right so now um i'm going to i mean i could do more but for for the demo uh let's say that this is enough so i'm going to neutralize this solution by adding some baking soda so as, as long as there is a reaction that means that there is some acidity so add until nothing reacts So you see how much baking soda I need to add, to, to add in order to neutralize this. And even though there were only few drops of the solution into this bath. So that tells you how strong the acids are. Fortunately, baking soda is very cheap. Uh, this box is maybe one or two dollars at Walmart. Now everything is neutral and uh, what you want to do is to rinse uh, the baking soda out so just use some clear water to do that uh, I guess you know how to rinse so I'm gonna do this off camera so now this is uh, this has been rinsed off and now what you want to do is to simply lay it on some sheets some metal sheets baking sheets and just let them dry out. Um, maybe you could use a hair dryer to to increase the speed of the process, but I'm just gonna let it dry. That's what I usually do. the flash cotton again try not to shred it but you want to to spread it so that it dries faster well first make sure that squeeze it for a good bit it will dry faster like this So, I don't know how long um, it needs to dry, usually I just wait 24 hours. Um, well, I'll come back when it's dry and then we'll see how it burns. So, I let the paper dry for about 5 hours outside, but it was still a little bit damp. So, uh, I finished drying these. Uh, these pieces with a hair dryer so let's see how how they work uh, i'm gonna cut just small pieces because i don't want to burn everything at once okay that should be enough for for our tests So, first test. 
Perfect. So this is the paper towel from public bathroom or wherever I got it. I don't remember, so let's see. Yep, it burns without leaving any ashes. And here, this is the toilet paper. So it works perfectly well. Um, maybe one more time with the flash cotton. I mean, this one really burns well. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it on Facebook, on Twitter, or whichever social network you are using. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to do it, and for me, it really means a lot because I spend a lot of time making these videos, and uh, that's the only reward I'm receiving. So, please do it. Also, register to my channel so that you can see the other tutorials that I propose. And I thank you for watching.